G'day guys and gal. War is a bit of a funny thing, isn't it? It's fun, exciting, and enjoyed by billions across the globe, as long as it's not actually occurring right now. How many World War II video games and movies have been made for our entertainment? No one bats an eye because it isn't happening right now. Imagine if during World War II, COD World at War came out. People probably wouldn't be too stoked about that one. I mean, I'd totally get around Call of Duty Zelensky if that was Activision's next release, but I'm a bit of a weirdo, so my perspective doesn't really reflect that of many other people. But I'm getting really off topic. The Bad Dab War, the largest Astartes versus Astartes conflict since the Horus Heresy. Two opposing sides, not loyalist versus traitor, no, just a lot of stubbornness and immaturity. The Astral Claws had a point, they also needed to learn when to let the point go. The Imperium didn't really have a point, but the Imperium doesn't need a point to absolutely wreck some titties. Before we get started, Manscaped is something we've all come to know and love. The lawnmower is the only piece of machinery that I've ever felt comfortable touching my balls with, whilst the ball deodorant has made stanky dick a thing of the past. But I'm not here to tell you that, you already know it. Today I'm here to talk about Manscaped's new Ultra Premium Collection. Five products in one package that will not only upgrade, but also simplify your hygiene routine. Start off by using the Premium Body Wash. It's aloe vera and sea salt infused with Manscaped's cologne, which, credit where credit is due, is a very masculine, nice smelling mix. After that, the easy to use Manscaped 2 in 1 shampoo and conditioner will make your shower a genuine success. Did you know that Roland deodorant is way superior to spray on in pretty much every way? So it's awesome that Manscaped's deodorant is roll on and smells unreal. I've been exclusively using this for the past month and I genuinely get compliments. Then there's the hydrating body spray, which is this spray on moisturizing fragrance. I personally used most of the bottle this weekend at a music festival and it was amazing. Get these four unreal products as well as this free lip balm by using my link in code MAJORKILL. That'll give you 20% off your whole order and free international shipping. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the events of the Bad Dab War, who was involved with it, why did it happen, and the key moments in it and what the result was. My last video was a deep dive into the Astral Claws, so if you haven't already seen it, give it a watch after this one. And if you have seen it, well, you know, a second viewing never hurt anyone. Let's get into it. For context on why the Bad Dab War was such a unique, interesting time in Warhammer lore, it wasn't Imperium vs Xenos or Loyalist vs Chaos. It was Loyalist Space Marines vs Loyalist Space Marines. I mean, the fucking Lamenters were on the wrong side, and they are the nicest guys around. Unlike the Siege of Rax, which started with a misguided Cardinal and ended with a Lord Inquisitor leading a squad of Grey Knights to slay a Greater Demon of Corn, the Bad Dab War had no chaotic influence or taint until pretty much the end. When the Astral Claws officially lost, they were still the Astral Claws, and they only became the Chaos Warband, the Red Corsairs, some time after. Now to set the scene. The Astral Claws were an incredibly noble and powerful Space Marine chapter, proving themselves time and time again as the best of the best. As such, they were assigned as the Wardens of the Maelstrom, a prestigious position which was tasked with keeping all the fucky shit in the more low-key little brother version of the Eye of Terror away from Imperial trade routes. A big difference between the Maelstrom and the Eye of Terror is that Chaos seemed to have little influence in the Maelstrom. It was full of Xenos, Orcs and Raiders, but it had next to no Chaos Marines or Demons in it. Well, at least until after the Bad Dab War. The Astral Claws performed their duties diligently, however their newly appointed chapter master, Huron, realised that with enough reinforcements and supplies, the Maelstrom could be genuinely purged of all hostile forces. A major win for the Imperium. However, the Imperium didn't see it like that. They saw the Maelstrom as a low-level threat, ironically due to the great efforts of the Astral Claws. Hence, the Imperium didn't want to commit a bunch of resources to try pacify it. It's funny how avoiding a small problem now to save a small bit of money will often result in a big problem emerging that costs 10 times more to fix. Literally the Bad Dub War in a nutshell. Huron got very pissed off by the Imperium's decision and he said, Fuck it, I'll do it myself deciding to increase his chapter numbers dramatically as well as improve their weaponry. To do this, he stopped paying his required taxes of resources and gene seed. 
opting to keep it to himself to grow his chapter. This set off red flags from the nearby systems, who were waiting to receive these shipments, hence they sent their own ships to collect what they were owed. Instead, all they collected was a big ass land strike which annihilated the collection fleet, killing over 20,000 people. Huron really wasn't taking anyone's shit. A few more fleets were sent out and each one coincidentally went missing, and by missing, I mean blown up by Huron. Huron was sick of all this tax bullshit. Why should he give resources to a lesser system when he needed to hold the line against the literal tear in reality. As such, he wrote up a letter, which basically declared that he exempted himself from paying taxes. The letter was co-signed by the Lamenters and Mantis Warrior chapters, who had fought alongside the Astral Claws in recent times. Not many people actually argued against this or took issue with it because it was kind of fair enough. However, the nearby sector who was getting shafted by this, called the Cathago Sector, were not happy at all and they wanted to declare war. But a random sector of humans wanting to declare war on a massive space marine chapter is like a bunch of armless Russians trying to take on the mayor of Kiev in a boxing match. It's just not going to go too well, eh? Fortunately for the Carthans, they were friends with a few of their own Astarte chapters, hence they called for aid. The Firehawks responded, and if you know the Firehawks, you know these guys don't fuck about. The Firehawks went to investigate, and they ended up having a vicious void battle with the Mantis Warriors, after the Hawks entered their system, and both sides started telling the other that they fucked their mums. But yeah, like, one Firehawk ship versus a Mantis Warrior fleet didn't go so well for the Firehawks. With the loss of a Firehawk ship, the entire chapter was enraged, and they prepared for war. They did end up getting their prisoners back from the Mantis Warriors, but it was too little too late. All the man-children's testosterone had been turned up to 11, and there was blood to spill. The Firehawks, backed up by the Carthan mortal armies, invaded the systems of the Astral Claw and Mantis Warriors. Despite some initial wins, they were ambushed, cut off, and driven back, suffering a decisive defeat that knocked them on their ass. The Firehawks called in the Marines errant, whilst the Astral Claws called in the Lamenters to further back them up. This was awkward, as the Marines errant and the Lamenters were bros, so when they had to fight, they were only allowed to slap each other, and each Marine was allowed three timeouts if it got too rough. Now I might be making it seem quite low key and chill, but the two sides were really killing each other. The Astral Claws took out most of the Firehawks and were actually keen on performing genocide against them altogether, whilst over a dozen worlds were viciously taken over. The Successionists were winning, big time, especially when another chapter, the Executioners, came to their aid due to an old blood oath. By this point, the Imperium couldn't ignore what was happening anymore. Over five chapters were murdering the shit out of each other, and it had just gotten way too retarded. The Inquisition did an investigation, and they found that the Astral Claws, most notably Huron, had way overreached. He had stopped paying his taxes, declared himself tax exempt, expanded his chapter to an unacceptably large size, and had taken planets from neighboring sectors. Not to mention their attempt to genocide the Marines errant and Firehawks. For this he was told to surrender to the Imperium and await trial. Huron immediately told the Imperium to get absolutely fucked. Fair game. To the Imperium's credit, they also punished the shit out of the Cathago Sector for being the ones to instigate the Civil War, executing most of their ruling class and enslaving billions of their citizens to pay back the debts they were owed. To forcibly bring Huron to his knees, the Imperium enlisted the Salamanders, the Red Scorpions, the Raptors, Fire Angels, Firehawks, and Marines errant chapters to crush the Successionist forces, which was now made up of the Lamenters, Executioners, Mantis Warriors, and Astral Claws. For the next few years, the war was vicious and bloody. Void warfare, planetary invasions, and a couple cheeky war crimes thrown in to keep things spicy. The loyalists would win a space battle, but then the successionists would successfully raid their rear supply lines. Neither side was clearly winning, so Huron decided to call a ceasefire so they could talk about what was happening and hopefully reach a peace agreement. Well, ceasefire talks in Warhammer must be cursed or something, because they never go well. After basically just insulting each other for an hour, a fleet of heretics attacked the meeting, resulting in the deaths of the Red Scorpion and Mantis Warriors chapter masters. It's unclear if Huron organized the heretic invasion, or if the ruinous powers just saw this as a good opportunity to continue the war, but it did the trick. The ceasefire was called off and the war resumed. The loyalists were getting really sick of all this shit, 
so they called in the Howling Griffins, Nova Marines, and the Sons of Medusa chapters to back them up. Now it does seem like the Loyalists outnumber the Successionists big time, and they kinda do, but you gotta remember that most of the Loyalist chapters aren't deploying their entire chapter. On top of that, the Astral Claws have about four chapters worth of Marines. The Successionists were also defending, which gives them that advantage. Another thing to note is that as the war waged on and the various Loyalist chapters took heavy casualties, they were allowed to drop out of the war to lick their wounds and recover. This happened to the Howling Griffins, as well as the Marines Errant, who both lost over 70% of their chapter. The war finally begun to turn to the Loyalists' favour when none other than the Minotaurs arrived. The Minotaurs are freakish, rumoured to be born of Iron Warrior Gene Seed. This chapter doesn't fuck around. Their chapter master, Asterian Malok, is considered to be one of the most powerful space marines to ever live, and it shows. Upon joining the war, they instantly took over a heavily defended world like it was nothing, before tearing Successionist Ash to shreds on a dozen more worlds. To make matters even worse for the Secessionists, the Space Sharks and the Exorcist chapters join the fray. The Space Sharks are horrifying and unstoppable, whilst the Exorcists literally allow themselves to be possessed and then cleansed of a demon as a part of their initiation. Hardcore as hell. The Lamenters, due to them being cursed and whatnot, were picked out by the Minotaurs as the first bitch that needed to be clapped. Their key ship, the one that stored all their gear, Gene Seed and other shit, was attacked by the Minotaurs. The Minotaurs tore the ship to shreds, massacred the Lamenters, and stole all their valuable shit, resulting in the Lamenters surrendering and officially being taken out of the war. The Space Sharks were feeling left out, so they attacked the Mantis Warrior Worlds, hoping to take out another Successionist chapter. And holy shit, did they do that? The Space Sharks took them to the Cum Zone, viciously raping each world in order to force the hit and run loving Mantis Warriors to actually stand and fight. Even the other Loyalist chapters were pretty appalled with how vicious the Space Sharks were. When the Mantis Warriors finally did their last stand thingo, Tybros, the Giga Chad chapter master of the Space Sharks, said Lamau, and he tore through the Mantis Warriors like they were little more than a cum stain on a horse miniskirt. The Mantis Warriors had been reduced to a small few, rendering them ineffective and basically kicking them out of the war. At this point, the only Successionist chapter that was able to stand up to the Minotaurs and Space Sharks were the Executioners, because they were a part of that small group of Loyalist chapters that are just hard as fuck. With the Successionists on the back foot, Huron started getting a bit heretical, creating illegal combat drugs to augment the mortal armies he had, whilst also capturing and tampering with Gene Seed he had taken off fallen Loyalist Astartes. He was also described as getting progressively more angry and paranoid. Can't say I blame him. If the Minotaurs and Space Sharks were coming after me, I'd shit the bed as well. This growing heresy within the Astral Claws was actually what ended up kicking the Executioners out of the war. See, when the Salamanders won a big battle and were heading back to the Loyalist space to recover, they were ambushed by an Astral Claw and Executioner fleet. After an intense void battle, the Executioners told the Salamanders to honourably surrender, then to allow the Executioners to escort them back to Imperial space where they must swear to exit the conflict. The Salamanders agreed as they were all going to die if they didn't, and the Executioners were known to be men of their word. However, the Astral Claws were kinda of batshit crazy, so when they boarded the Salamander ship as a part of the surrender, they started killing salamander prisoners and defiling their bodies. This sent the executioners into a rage, the ultimate breach of honour and trust. It was like the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones. I mean, it was literally called the Red Hour. After the hour, every single Astral Claw and their entire crew had been hunted down and decapitated by the executioners. The executioners then declared that their blood oath to be finished and they exited the war. With their departure and the defeat of both Mantis Warriors and Lamenters, Huron and his Astral Claws were now completely alone. In response, Huron declared that the Astral Claws were no longer part of the Imperium, basically saying that he was a heretic. To prove his own point, he then had all Ecclesiarchy priests executed and he outlawed the worship of the God Emperor. He basically became a mega dick. He was already a dick, but like, he was a way bigger dick now. After a few more epic battles that caused both sides to suffer a shitload more casualties, it was time for the final battle, the legendary invasion of Badab itself. The Loyalists had gained more reinforcements in the shape of the Mechanicus, as well as the Star Phantoms chapter, another chapter of certified hard motherfuckers. Damn, a lot of heavy hitters in the Badab war. To begin their attack, the Loyalists threw a fucking star fragment at the Astral Claw's void defences. This was followed up by intense boarding action, full send kind of stuff. With Asterian Malok at the helm, the void defences of Baddab were taken. All that remained was Baddab itself. 
Unlike the Siege of Rax, where every mina the loyalists claimed cost them countless lives, the Siege of Badab was way more vicious and effective. The Star Phantoms and Space Sharks landed first, and they tore the defenses a new asshole. Then the Mechanicus deployed its Titans. All that could be heard on the Vox network of Huron's armies were people shitting themselves and begging for mercy. Only the Palace of Thorns remained, a heavily defended citadel where Huron had gathered the rest of his astral claws for a last stand. Here is where the loyalists started to struggle. The palace had a mega shield on it and a shitload of guns, a pretty rough combo for sieging. In order to actually breach the palace, the Space Sharks low-key nuked the planet's core, destabilizing it and causing massive planet-wide earthquakes and power outs. With his palace breached, Huron was like, fuck this, and he headed to an escape ship, encountering a force of Star Phantoms. The two sides fought, with Huron getting point-blank blasted by a melter gun, blowing off half his body. Despite this, he was dragged to safety with him and 200 Astral Claws escaping into the Maelstrom the very thing that they had dedicated their lives to containing. The Bad Dab War was over, so who won? Chaos. Chaos won. This wasn't Loyalist vs Chaos, this was Loyalist vs Loyalist. The Lamenters, Mantis Warriors, Howling Griffins, Knights Errant, and Firehawks were all reduced to ineffective fighting capacity. The Astral Claws were fought off and became heretics, now called the Red Corsairs. This warband is actually now almost as powerful as the Black Legion. The result of the Bad Dab War was thousands of dead loyalist Astartes, and Chaos gaining Huron and the Red Corsairs. The Maelstrom also fucking sucks now. I mean, it sucked before, but it didn't have a huge Chaos warband in there. The Lamenters, Executioners, and Mantis Warriors were all forgiven as long as they survived a 100-year suicidal penitent crusade, whilst all the captured Astral Claws were executed as heretics. It's funny to think that if the Imperium had only just given the Astral Claws the reinforcements they needed to cleanse the Maelstrom, they wouldn't have to have engaged in the most vicious civil war since the Horus Heresy. Good work Imperium, you fucking idiot. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, the Patreon is the place to be. For only $1 per month give you access to some shit Huron would be disgusted at. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more wasteful content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.